instruments. Today, we're gonna do a quick walkthrough on the Machine Plus. We're gonna check out some of the sounds from expansions, some of the synthesizers like Massive and Prism. We're also gonna check out some of the included sounds like Drum Synth and Polysynth. I'm gonna build a beat, and at the end, we're gonna arrange the whole thing so you can see the workflow of Machine Plus. Let's jump right into it. So here we are on the Machine Plus. You can see it's very similar to the layout of the Mark III. You're gonna have a headphone output, two audio outputs, a microphone input with a preamp, a left and right input. You're also gonna have MIDI in and out and a couple USB ports where you can plug in things like audio interfaces and MIDI controllers. On the side is gonna be your SD card slot. Right now I have a 64 gig card in there, but you could put whatever you'd like. So one cool thing about Machine Plus is if we go to settings here and you have any downloaded expansions from Native Access, you can go down to library here you can see all the expansions that I have that I haven't yet installed. Another cool thing is if you're on the system tab, you can click storage, plug in a USB cable, and that allows you to access your SD card right on your computer. So if you want to upload samples, projects, or download them from your Machine Plus, you can. You can also put it in controller mode and use it similar to a Mark III with machine software, or it's just a regular MIDI controller with any DAW you'd like. So let's jump straight into this. First thing I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna to go to Browse. We're gonna tab over to Groups. And let's check out the latest expansion, Sacred Futures. This one recently came out. So I have, uh, I have pre here on right now, and that allows me to scroll through my groups and hear a little sample of what's inside of it. This one's really cool. I like that it's just melody sounds. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold shift and I'm going to turn patterns off. Uh, what you can do if you'd like, let's just do it for a, a quick glimpse here, you can load and it's going to actually load in all the patterns from that group. Now I want to play something with this sound, so I'm going to undo here, let's go back to browse and turn patterns off. Now when we load the group in there, I can go to pattern, you'll see there's nothing there. So let's check out some of these sounds. <laughs> go over to my mixer here, turn this group down a little bit. I'm also going to just quickly add a limiter to the master channel so that we don't clip or anything. Let's go back to sound. So you can see these sounds in this row are basically the same note but with different sounds. I like how they sound together, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna link them. Now, the way to do this is you click the first pad, you go to link here, and you select the group that you wanna link it in. So I'm gonna set one. And I'm also gonna leave the mode on send because I want to send this sound to the other ones to make sure it triggers. This, I'm gonna click one, and I'm gonna set this to receive. Now the reason I did this is if I click the first pad, you'll see it triggers the one above it. But if I click the pad above it, it's not going to trigger the first one. What's cool about that is that allows me to play some of these other sounds without having to use all three of them at the same time. So I'm just going to quickly do that to all the sounds across the board. Set this one to group two. This one to three. Now the reason I didn't do the top note is specifically because that's a bass. And while it is very cool, I want to add my own 808 in here. So let's uh, let's record a cool cool melody pattern here. I'm going to go to events so you can see what I'm doing while I'm recording it. Let's 
change the tempo. Let's pick it up to like 143. And on my pattern, I'm gonna create a new pattern and I'm gonna leave the length to auto because I just want it to record ongoing. And whenever I hit stop, it'll shorten it up to the appropriate length. So let's do this. So you see I'll hit stop there, and if I go back to my pattern, it's eight measures. So let's play that back. Cool, I think we got a cool, cool little melody pattern here. So I'm just gonna go back to my mixer, go to group, and turn this down just a little more. Now, let's go find another group with some drum samples in it. So I'm gonna go click on my new group here, which is gonna be B. I'm gonna go to my browser. This one's cool and it's actually, sounds like it's in the same key here. So, might be able to use some of the sounds with my other group that I have going on. Let's check out some of these sounds. Some cool sounds in here. Let me just play this back for a second, see if I can get a groove going. Yeah, let's record something like that. I'm just going to click on events so you can see again what I'm doing here. And we will hit shift and record, which will give me a four click count in. So, um, for this, I'm actually gonna turn fixed velocity on. I'm gonna go to keyboard, tab over, and change the velocity to 127. This way, everything's at full velocity since I'm only recording a kick and a snare right now. Um, I'm also going to go back to my mixer, go to group, and turn this one down a little bit as well. And let's go back to plugin, click sound, to events here, and let's record a little groove. So same thing, you'll notice that I let it auto run and this one came out to four measures, which is perfect for right now and I'll probably end up doubling it later. So now we got a kick and a snare in there. I am going to add some hi-hats. So for the hi-hat, I will turn off fixed velocity so it can make it feel a little more human. I'm also gonna turn on note repeat. And with note repeat, you have different divisions up here which you can change. You hold the pad and you'll hear uh, depending on the pressure I hold it, changes the velocity and how loud the sound is. So if I push louder, push harder. And then you can switch between these different divisions while you're holding the pad. Makes it super easy for just recording hi-hats in real quick. I'm going to change 30 second notes to 64 just to make it a little faster. And let's record this. So I'm gonna turn the metronome on here. So that's cool, just simple hi-hat groove. Um, but to make them a little more exciting, I'm gonna pitch them up and down. And to do this, it's extremely simple. You have the pitch on the touch strip here. So you can click pitch. When we hit record, I'm gonna turn the pitch up and down and it's gonna record the automation of me doing it. So let's do this.
cool. I think we got a cool hi-hat groove in there. Now let's move on and add a couple more sounds. Uh, one thing I want to do is add a little percussion. Another way you can record without having to actually play things in is by using the step sequencer. Uh, to do this, we can click on the sound we want to use and click step. And you'll see how this works here is you have a box based on the length you have selected and I can tap in as much as I want and based on how hard I push it's going to change the velocity so if I have fixed velocity off I can push a little quieter or I can push really hard and you see the levels based on these bars here so uh, let's just throw in a little percussion I'm gonna hit play <laughs> We'll go to the next bar. You just get away with this. So, it's cool. so I'm just gonna copy that to the to the next measures as well. So we'll just do boom and uh, one here. Cool. You know, give it a little, little extra groove there. I'm going to turn that guy down. And now let's move on to something a little more exciting. Um, as much as I love this sample here, we're going to use the drum synth and create our own kick. So what I'm going to do is go to plugin. I'm going to click on the actual plugin itself and we'll go down to kick. On the pad, I'm going to change the bass key down to E, which is what our song is in. And we will go back to plugin and we're going to have to tune this up a little bit just to make sure actually on E about five semitones up and let's crank the decay that's sounding good now I want to add some distortion to it let's turn it down a little bit let's go to keyboard mode and go to E We can also, on keyboard mode, tab over and you have scale. You could set your scale. We could say minor, and now we're in E minor. And that is a great 808. Now, one thing I'm gonna do, instead of playing this 808, because I really like the pattern of my kick drum, and I basically just want the 808 to follow it, so I'm gonna copy the events from my kick to my 808, and then we'll transpose them up and down. To do this, we're going to select our kick, go to events, go to select, and you can select the pad. Now you'll see all the kick drum events have lit up here, right? So I can hold shift and hit copy, and then we can go use the encoder, tab down to our kick drum track, our 808 track, which is nine. I can hit shift and paste. And now it actually put all of the sounds all of the events on our 808 pattern. So let's go back to keyboard mode. And what's happening now is all of those events I just pasted are going to be on the root note of C, because that's what the 808 or the kick drum sample played on. So I'm going to transpose them all down. They're all selected right now. So I can just hit uh, shift, hold shift, and go down a couple semitones to E. Let's play that real fast. I'm also just going to solo the drums. So now when we get to this bar, we need to actually change the notes. So I'm going to change the start. See, I can just push that and unhighlights them and the end because I only want to change these two. And we will go shift and bring that up to A. And then in the next window here, tab over to these two, 
we can change the low and high notes to those two and we are going to change these to G. Let's play that back. Okay, let's throw the other sounds in here. Cool, just got a little mixing to do here. Let's turn the 808 down a bit, but I think this is sounding really cool so far. So uh, since we're still on this second group, I did like these bells and I want to add those in there. One thing I do want to do to them is add a bit of reverb. So I'm going to go to plug in, go to the plus, and turn the reverb on. Let's crank the time up quite a bit. Turn the mix up and the room size. That's cool. So I'm just going to record that and maybe this crash too. I think we have something starting to sound really cool here. Uh, I'm going to keep going by adding one more synth, and then after that, we're going to do some arranging here. So let's click on a new group, C. We're going to go to Browse. And one thing I do want to note is um, if you go over to Instruments, you do have included instruments such as FM8, you got Massive, Prism, Monarch, a lot of really cool synthesizers that you can use uh, just for a quick preview Let's just load this here and once it loads if you're in the plugin you can actually adjust all the settings just like you're using massive on the computer so you have all your macro knobs you have 16 different pages uh, the first eight are macros then you start getting into your EQs your effects different oscillators and things like that um, so it's literally just like using the plugin on the computer. It's, it's really awesome. But for this, we are going to use the built-in machine polysynth, which just came out. So I'm going to go to sounds, all types, and we're going to go to polysynth. A lot of cool sounds here. Another cool thing you can do if you want to get to the bottom of the list is you can hold shift and it's going to go by page. But I think for this we'll use this cool little pluck and actually turn it into an ARP. So I'm going to load it. We're going to go back to the plugin. And here we can do some adjustments. You can automate all of these different things, which is really cool. So for this, we're going to go to our chord mode. And it's actually already set to a harmony of a 135. I'm going to go octave up. And now what I'm going to do is turn on the arpeggiator. And we're going to arpeggiate the chord. So what's really cool about this is when you actually click record, you're going to see all the notes from the chord playing just as if you played it like an arpeggiator. So let's uh, play with some settings here. Let's change this back to 30 second notes. Let's go two octaves. And then you have different sequences. I think that's really cool. Um, I do want to add some reverb to it to give it a nice spacey feel. So we're going to crank the reverb time, similar to what I did last time, maybe not as much. And on the arpeggiator, I'm going to lock it so I can play it without having to be on the ARP screen. Uh, 
I think that is really cool right there. So let's go ahead and record that in here. Same thing, I'm gonna leave my pattern on auto length. We'll probably end up doing about eight bars here. Let's do this. That came out perfect. So I'm gonna go to my mixer and just turn this down a little bit. So now we have all these different sounds. Um, personally, I like to work from the backwards approach. So what that means is I like to build out my entire song. So this would be you know, my, my main verse or my main chorus. And then I like to scale things back. And I think that's a really great workflow with machine, um, especially with how the ideas mode works. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna to go to ideas mode. And what's cool about this is it gives you these different, uh, different columns here and you can change patterns based on what you've done. So for instance, let's go to our drum group. Let's solo this. And I'm gonna to go to pattern and I'm gonna duplicate. Well, first, first let's double it and make it eight measures. So it matches everything else. And now I am going to duplicate it and by doing this, we're going to go to pattern one and I'm going to take things out. So we're going to start scaling things back. So for instance, let's get rid of uh, the kick drums for the intro here, the hi-hats, get rid of those, the perk, we can get rid of those. Let's play that. Uh, I still need to get rid of those hi-hats, so I'm going to click it, shift, clear. Kick drum, clear. Perk, clear. And I'm also gonna get rid of this symbol. So click the pad, hit hold shift, and hit clear. Okay, so as I was saying, if you're in ideas mode, this is how it works. It really lets you generate those concepts by making a whole bunch of different patterns. So I can get rid of this. And that's how I'm gonna to wanna to start my song. So just by taking things out and putting them back in, you can really get an idea of how your arrangement's gonna be. So for me, that's gonna be my first section. Now I'm gonna add another scene, and for pattern two, I'm gonna bring everything in. So I'm gonna bring the full drums and all the sounds in together. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to scene, and we are going to append both of our scenes to our arrangement view. So you can see these are the two scenes we just created. Uh, one and two, one being the one without the kick drum and the hi-hat's gonna be the intro. So I can click that, and then I can click two, and it puts them back to back in a timeline view. So now that we've done that, let's hold shift and go to song mode, and then here is our layout. So let's play it from the top. So you get the idea here. Um, so now let's do a couple more things. We are going to go to pattern and let's just go ahead and duplicate this as well. This is our little ARP that we made. And the reason I'm doing this is because we're gonna do some perform effects on it here in a minute. Um, but for right now, let's go to scene. We're on scene two there, perfect. And that's gonna be the second pattern. And you'll see if I click scene one and go to pattern, it's gonna be on pattern one, so that's perfect. Um, okay, so one thing I wanna do here is talk about clips. Clips are super cool, they basically, uh, it's basically a pattern that you can overlap on top of your patterns. So if you wanna have a quick dropout or a cool snare fill in a certain section, you can do that without having to create a whole new pattern. And on Machine Plus, they make it really easy. So what I'm gonna do is click on group B because I wanna do a clip of a snare roll before the main part of the song comes in. So I'm gonna to go to clips, and I'm gonna create a clip. Now you'll see you can move this wherever you want. Now I'm gonna put it right before 
uh, bar nine, and we are gonna hold shift, and we're going to go back to clips. As you see here, I'm on clip, and we can record something. In here. Let's go here, and let's record a little uh, snare roll. Let me just go back to this ARP. So let's go to events and we will record something small during this clip here. Turn select off so we can see what we're doing. And let's just hit record here. So you can see it records the clip over what I was doing. I'm gonna I'm gonna shorten this just a little bit. And let's just go back and play that. Cool. So that's clips. It lets you just place them wherever you want on top of your patterns. Once again, really useful feature. And now the last thing I want to do here is do some perform effects on top of this arpeggiator pluck. So let's go back to section. And we're going to select our group and I'm going to go shift perform. And right now there's a filter on here. So let's just see what that sounds like. That's really cool. It's pretty much exactly what I want to do here. So. Um, so to record anything that you want to do with the touch strip and form effects other than pitch and modulation you're going to hold auto for automate and what I'm going to do is give my I'm going to hit record just so I can get the four click count in and let's do this here hold auto at the same time it is multi-touch so you can do different types of effects And now we got that. Let's play it from the top. And that is Machine Plus. So hopefully this gave you a quick idea of the workflow of Machine Plus, what you can do with it, and what you can do without having a computer and really be able to put you know, your hands on the knobs and focus on what's in front of you. I think it's a really useful tool and it's a cool way to get out of uh, the locked in mouse and keyboard mode. And it's just something different. You can sample into it and there's so many unique things you can do. It's great for traveling, throw it in your backpack and all sorts of things. So. Hopefully this video was super helpful. If you have any questions, you can check it out at nativeinstruments.com. Thanks for watching.